Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is another very interesting example. We have a block which is pushed against a vertical wall. And yes, there is friction between the block and the wall. It's coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.2. And here we have a force pushing the block towards the wall, but notice it's at an angle where theta here is equal to 60 degrees. Assuming the mass of the block is 5 kilograms, what is the force required to keep the block moving upward at a constant speed? Later on, we're going to do another example where we have the velocity constant going downward, and then the third example where we actually have an acceleration. But let's take it one step at a time. The key to doing this problem here is twofold. First of all, we have to first show all the forces involved in the problem. Secondly, we have to realize that if the velocity is constant, that means there's no acceleration, and when there's no acceleration, there's no net force on the object in any direction, including the vertical direction. So those are the keys. So let's start with identifying all the forces acting on the block, M. Here we have a force that's pushing at an angle, so we should come up with both the vertical and the horizontal components. The vertical component, F sub x, notice if we turn this into a triangle, this component here is adjacent to the angle, so therefore F sub, oh, sorry, not F sub x, this is F sub y, the vertical direction. That would then be equal to the force F times the cosine of the angle theta. That's kind of strange because normally we don't associate the cosine to the vertical direction, but in this case, the way it's drawn, it is indeed that way. On the horizontal direction, F sub x, that's going to be equal to F times the sine of theta, because if we move this component over here, we notice it's opposite to the angle, so therefore we use the sine. In addition to that, we have the weight, the force of gravity, pulling down, mg, and then we have the friction force. Now, what will be the direction of the friction force? And even I make mistakes on that, unless I follow this simple uh, technique of figuring out the direction of the friction force. The direction of the friction force is opposite to the direction the object will move if there was no friction force at all. So if there's no friction force at all and the block is being pushed upward at a constant velocity, then opposite that direction is downward. So the friction force will be downward in this case. So we draw the friction force like this, force friction, and that's equal to the normal force times mu. Now in this case, the normal force is provided by the horizontal component of this force, which is F sine theta. So therefore, the friction force is F sine theta times mu. And of course, it's mu sub k since the block will be moving at a constant speed. So now we've identified all the forces in the y direction, the component of force pushing upward, the weight, and the friction force. And now we can set up the equation where we know that F net is equal to the mass times acceleration, but in this case, since we have a constant velocity, we know that's equal to zero, so the net force equals zero. So what is the net force? Well, the net force is all the forces aiding the movement, in this case, the velocity going upward, minus all the forces opposing that motion. And so we can say that F net is equal to all the forces aiding, which is gonna be F times a cosine of theta, the vertical component of the force pushing the block, minus the weight of the block, and minus the friction force, which is F sine theta times mu sub k. And of course, since there's no acceleration, that must equal zero. And notice what we're doing here is we're trying to find the force required to slide the block upward at a constant velocity. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out an F so we move the mg to the other side. So we have f times the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta times mu sub k. And that equals, we move the minus mg over, that becomes a plus mg. And finally, we can say that the force required will be mg divided by the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta times mu sub k. And now if we want to find the numerical value, let's plug in the numbers. So that's equal to the mass, 5 kilograms times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, divided by the cosine of 60 degrees minus the cosine of 60 degrees, oop, I missed 60 degrees, oh, that's a terrible looking zero, times mu sub k, which is 0 0.2. Let's get rid of this and make it a, 
a nicer looking zero. All right, with the calculator, we should be able to figure out what that's equal to. So in the denominator, we have the sine of, oop, ooh, wait a minute. That should be the cosine, that should be the sine. See, I have to pay attention too because I will make mistakes if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing. So the sine of 60 times 0.2, and then we add that, see, 60, take the sine times 0.2, and then add, subtract that from the cosine of 60, which is 0.5. And then we bring that to the numerator and we multiply times 49 and we get a force of, let's see, let's round it off to 150 Newtons. So that's the force required to push the block upward at a constant speed. It doesn't matter what the speed is, it could be large, it could be small. Remember Newton's first law, once an object is in motion at a constant speed, it will remain at, in motion at that constant speed unless there's a net force acting on it. Since there's no net force acting on it, since acceleration is zero, that speed will continue forever unless something comes along to change that. And that's how it's done.